I like this little sander, but I think I'm going to have to get another one so I don't have to change discs. And the cable length's a bit crap. You know, it's what? Five foot? I don't have to change discs now. 60 grit on one, 120 on the other. Right, I'll get these sanded. But I get asked sometimes why do I use beach if it's just going to get painted. To me it's just a material. And I visited a house where I made some alcove cupboards and made the doors out of pine. And it's a prime example of why I don't use pine anymore. When I made them in the shop there was only a couple of mil. Hinges were a bit tight when I first made them, but I altered that when I came to fix it in the house. You can see in their centrally heated house, they've shrunk. The top rails shrunk, so it's exposing the ends of the styles. And the overall doors have shrunk so much that there's a massive gap down the middle. They painted them after I'd left, and they seem happy with them, so I didn't really mention it, but I'm not happy with it, so that's why I avoid using pine if I can and I prefer to use the beach so hopefully that will stay in line and there won't be a massive gap down the middle between the two doors plus I use beach because it feels so nice when you shut these doors they, they clunk shut you know like a hardwood sort of clunk softwood you know, it feels like softwood. Even when it's painted, you can sort of feel that it's, it's softer. Just gives a better quality job. Most of the wood on these doors is quite good, but I've got a bit of, a little bit of filling here. These are easy. When you're spraying, it shows up every little mark, even sanding marks sometimes, if they're quite coarse. But I just want to put a bit of filler on this corner here. If I put filler on, there's a chance it'll just break off when I come to sand it, so I'm going to use my pointy tool, put a little dent in the middle, make it worse basically, and then I've been using this stuff, it's ways, it feels like there's, you know, the tub's empty and it's sort of fluffy and powdery, it's almost like, sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's, it's good. So I'll put a dent in there. Only needs to be a little one. That'll just give the filler something to, to grab hold of. Right into that hole. It sands very easily, this stuff, so I'll leave it proud. And that little hole should hold the little bit of filler that I put in. 
and fill in little holes like this because I know that when you spray it don't fill those holes imagine imagine that's your hole when you spray there's paint on the surface and it sort of it does that it doesn't actually fill the hole it doesn't fill it level and you actually get a bit of a ridge on either side like that and you think oh, I'll put another coat on that will fill it but it doesn't your second coat does that and it actually gets worse you know the hole gets wider I think it's surface tension the, the, the paint sort of peels away from the hole so what you have to do is fill it either fill it to begin with or fill it on your first coat Time to start spraying. The doors are face up, so I'll put primer on those, fill any holes or anything, give them a sand, put another coat of primer on. Next day, flip them over, put primer on the backs, and while they're that way up, I'll put top coat on the backs after sanding and priming and prepping and everything. And then finally, I'll flip them back up so the faces are back up, put top coat on. And that's the way they'll sit, so if there is any damage, or if I haven't let the paint dry properly, at least the damage will be on the backs, and the faces up should be good and clean. And yesterday when I was stacking these on, I blew everything down around the surrounding areas. Kicked up loads of dust, gave it a sweep off, and then later on last night, when the dust had settled, I blew it all down again. And as I'm going along now, I'll blow stuff down and try not to kick up any more dust. But I won't blow anything else so that I'm not disturbing the muck that's around me. And here I've got the end panels. This is the paint. PU paint. Polyurethane enamel. And it's sort of that colour. Needs a shake. So two of those, one catalyst, a bit of thinners just to dilute it, mixing cups, have two to one there look, you can see it, and I'm using Deva Bliss 1.8mm nozzle, I stripped this down yesterday, gave it a good clean, make sure it's all tidy inside, I didn't clean the outside you can tell. But I cleaned the important bits inside. The pressure has been altered. It's spraying just over 30 pounds PSI. So I'll see, I might alter that. It's normally a little bit lower than that. But I'll get this mixed. So, the two mark there, one above. So I'll put two of paint in. And one of the catalyst. It's a little bit more than two and And I'm gonna put just a little bit of thinners in. There is a ten percent mark here. The paint's down here somewhere. There is a ten, twenty, thirty percent mark on the thing, but I'm gonna put a blob in. I want this first coat to be quite thin, plus it sprays a little easier. You get a little bit of orange peel with this with this um, PU paint if you, do, if you spray it on too thick. I find that it's better to put lots of thin coats on. So, one night filter again, it's all I ever use.
and I've got to know how fast the paint goes through the filter as to how thick or thin it is I want to be able to pour it like I did then and it go through the filter at about the same rate and just make sure that little hole's clear that's in there that lets air back in so you don't get a vacuum and I'm going to start at the rack, top of the rack work my way down so that I'm not pulling any rubbish onto the ones that have just been painted I did give all these rails a, a wipe with a damp cloth yesterday Right, it's been an hour or so, paint's dry, there's a couple of little cracks there that I missed, so I'll put a bit of filler in those, and around the joints here, I don't know if you can see, put the light on, you get a little crack, a little line, so under that end look, I'm going to put a bit of sealant around there, I've been using this stuff, instant plaster filler, it's just like fill a bit in a tube, it's good. Same again, it feels like it's empty. I was going to give this stuff a go. The reviews say that it's quite good, it's like decorator's cork, but slightly different. But I can't find a drying time on it. So I'm just going to go with this stuff. So for the holes, I'm just going to Slight rub down, make sure it's flat. And a little bit of filler. If you don't sand it down first, you filler. You know, your knife goes blah 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 over the lumps. But this is quite smooth. This solvent paint doesn't make the MDF gets a bit rough, but the it doesn't make the fibres on the wood stand up. My filler knife's lost its sharp corners now, so I could sharpen it, I guess, but I'm like, I've cut myself a little beach block and drag that along there. And I'll just get a bit of a cloth, just give that a wipe. Now, while all that filler's drying, you see these bits, I find it quite hard to spray in here without getting too much paint on and getting dribbles so a little artist brush and a pot of paint and I'm just going to touch them up I 
and sometimes getting under there is difficult. It looks like I've got under there. I'll leave them to dry properly till tomorrow, then I can turn them over. I'm just going to put the second coat on here, I'm sanding them first with 320 paper. You can tell when you've sanded it, it goes a matte colour. Any that you've missed are still shiny. You see how much dust there is. That's why I'm not too worried about this lot. I'll wait an hour or so, let the dust settle, and then just give the doors a quick blow over just before I spray the next coat. Now everything's had two coats of primer and it's very smooth. As you can see there's a bit of dust on it. I don't want to sand it and create more dust. I don't think it needs it. I'll check just as I go around. Maybe give little bits of rub down if they need it. But I'm going to give them a wipe over with some meth. The meth shouldn't react to the PU paint. If you use thinners, which I have done in the past, you've got to be very quick. With these doors, I don't want to be soaking the, the paint that's already on there because it'll soften it up. The cloth starts getting sticky. A bit of mess shouldn't do that. And it should evaporate pretty quickly. I'm just dampening the rag. I'm not washing it off, I'm just wiping it off the damp here. The dampness just helps collect the dust. And what I'm going to do is try and wipe to one end and try not to put the dust back on where I've already wiped. I don't know if you can see, there's a little little lump here. So rather than sanding, you end up sanding around it rather than the actual lump. So I'm just going to use a razor blade. Take the top off it. Give it a wipe, give it a bit of a blow down. See, I did one there. It's flat to the touch now. The top coat's exactly the same colour. PU enamel, 2 to 1, Churchill Downs, matte, sometimes it says like 10%, 20%, they put a flatting agent in it, stop it being shiny, so you've got to give it a good shake, because that can settle a little bit. Same again, two parts paint, one catalyst, and maybe a little thinners, just to thin it down a bit. This stuff's normally a little thinner. Sprays a little bit easier than the primer. Time to turn them over. There's not too much dust on them. 
really I need some extraction so when I'm spraying I'm pulling all the dust out I do have a fan that blows on these to dry them I've also got a big ass fan up there blowing out really I need ducting and filters and everything like that that's another day I'll get these turned over get sprayed on the other side and I've shifted everything else up there so hopefully not too much dust and when I'm spraying these now with the top coat I'm spraying that direction try and blow the over spray away avoiding spraying that way onto the doors it's not bad the dust I can wipe off but over spray sticks a little and it's been really windy last few days so that ain't doing much Right, now they're all Right, now they're all face up They'll sit like that for 36 hours It's Friday night now, so I'm going to leave them over the weekend Go fit them all, go start fitting them all on Monday <laughs> 